Hey besties, right now we're shooting a street food video in Ho Chi Minh City. But before we begin this video, I want to say a huge thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. Right here, something very close to my heart, Vietnamese food. Something else that's close to my heart though, is therapy. Looking back at my own journey, there was a time when I struggled in my relationships with others. In those moments, therapy came to my rescue. Whether you're facing mental health challenges or just going through tough times, therapy can give you tools to see life through a new perspective. That's why I'm genuinely excited to team up with today's sponsor, BetterHelp. So what is BetterHelp and how can they help you? Let me break it down. BetterHelp is an online platform with a mission to make therapy more affordable and accessible. With a vast network of licensed therapists, their goal is to offer you the guidance you need, all from the comfort of your own home. Now, finding a therapist is easier than ever because you're not restricted by your physical location. To get started, all you have to do is answer a few questions. BetterHelp will match you with a licensed therapist based on your answers and needs. Simply click the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash B-E-F-R-S. With this link, you'll get 10% off your first month. The best part is if you want to change your therapist, you can, and it's super easy. It's not going to cost you any extra money or be an insurance headache either. If you've been putting off therapy, right now is the time to take control of your mental health. To get started, just head over to betterhelp.com slash B-E-F-R-S. Now, on to the show. In this video, I'll be trying out Saigon's brand new. This is a preparation I've never seen or heard of before in Vietnam. Michelin street food restaurants. This restaurant behind me is proudly boasting two different signs showing that they've made it on the Michelin Guide. Right here, we have it. Our first Michelin quality meal on the streets of Saigon. It looks so delicious. The Michelin company is famous for their rating system. Actually, Michelin started as a tire company and they wanted to rate and recommend restaurants so people would drive more, wear out their tires, and buy more tires. They started originally in France, but they've rated food all over Europe and recently they've come to Asia. First, they went to Singapore and Thailand, but finally they came here to Vietnam, a place that definitely deserves some culinary acknowledgement. Today, we're gonna go to three of the restaurants the Michelin folks say are among the best when it comes to street food in Ho Chi Minh City. But this list is a bit controversial Controversial and not everyone agrees. Wow, look at that guy, what a strong dude. Today I'm gonna suss out myself through my own experience whether or not these restaurants really deserve the accolades they've been given. Let's go. We've come to our first location, it's behind me right now. This place is called Gum Tom Bagging. Here's what the Michelin folks have to say about it. Since the 1990s, this unassuming stall has been serving what many locals consider to be the best gum tom or broken rice dish in town. Their most popular version is steamed broken rice topped with pork chop, marinated in a secret sauce and perfectly grilled over charcoal. Let me tell you, I've been to this place before and they have pork chops bigger than your head. Let's go take a look. Oh, table guy, he came back. Oh, okay, after carefully crossing traffic and nearly dying, we are here. This is the main grill master right here, Sin Chan. He is grilling up massive pork chops. The smells wafting off here are amazing. You can smell the charcoal, you can smell the fat hitting the charcoal and sizzling coming up. Take a look. Oh, it's a big beauty. I love it. If you come around on this side, this is where the pork chops start. They probably are marinating these overnight. I know they marinate it in fish sauce, but there are other ingredients too that they keep a secret. Let's talk more about the grilling system here. First of all, we have the flaming hot charcoal underneath the meat. What's keeping that going is the fans blowing air into the cinders, making them hotter and hotter by the moment, but is there any protective guard on the fan? Absolutely not. This woman is contending with many different elements. There is the extreme heat in front of her, and then on her left or right, if she makes the wrong move, boom, she's gonna shave off an elbow with this fan. So this is the pork chop, but the word gum tom actually means broken rice. Let me show you that now. Right here, we have the famous broken rice. A long time ago in Vietnam, during rice harvesting, the broken grains of rice were separated from the rest of the rice, and actually, people didn't want it as much. But instead of wasting the rice, people made use of it. What's really special about it is it's really good at soaking up flavors. Once you combine fish sauce with some of that pork chop and some of this broken rice, it will send you to another dimension. Let's make a plate now and take a look. Step one, we have a big pile of broken rice and then we come over here to where they have the sides. He's starting with scallion oil and fried pork fat. From here, one of the biggest pork chops I've ever seen in my life. It takes up pretty much the real estate of the whole plate. This is pork skin. Then we have another type of pork product. This is egg loaf or che. And then right here, we have an egg, a Chinese sausage being cut into smaller pieces. Some cucumber, daikon, carrots. This right here is our fish sauce. That plate is complete. It looks magnificent. Let's go try it out. Guys, right here we have it, our first Michelin quality meal on the streets of Saigon. I can't believe it. It looks so delicious. Let's start with this. Listening, delicious, fatty Chinese sausage. It's very dense, it's very sweet and fatty too. It's a nice omen of things to come. Next, this is an egg loaf, but you can see speckles inside. It's also filled with pork and woodier mushroom. 
eggy, savory. You can taste the pork inside, and there's a little hint of mushroom flavor. It is so good. And this is pork skin. Mmm, salty. It tastes like they've rubbed it down with toasted rice powder. A little bit gummy in the texture. Very delicious flavor. So that is me trying my best to eat my way around this pork chop. Now I'm gonna try to lift it up without causing an earthquake or an avalanche. You can see a sheen, it's shining. That's both from the caramelization of the sugar and the fat together. Cheers. Wow. You have the flavor from the charcoal. You have the sweetness. You have the savoriness from the fish sauce that's inside of there. You have these little burnt bits here and there, which are technically carcinogens that could shorten your life, but increase your mood, which is what I care about right now. So that's the pork chop, but the secret behind this dish is that all the elements are meant to be eaten together. I'm gonna get a little bit of egg. Here we have the scallion oil and the pork fat, and then this, the fish sauce. They've added a lot of sugar, and they've added a lot of chilies, too. It's what brings all these different elements together. Throw on some pork chop. That is the bite of the century right there. Wait. Every time I take a bite, the camera gets closer. Has it always been like that? All right, I'm gonna try to ignore that. So I'm gonna put this in and then shovel in the rice. Mm. Wow. It is a hurricane of flavor. It's sweet, it's savory, it's indulgent, it's rich, and it could not be any better. The question now is, does this restaurant deserve to be on the Michelin Guide for Vietnam? For me, unequivocally, the answer is 100% yes. I've had gum tom quite a few times throughout the city, and this is better, not by a little bit, not by 10%, by a, a multitude of math better. So this is location one. They knocked it out of the park. But next we're going to a place that's much more controversial because we're covering Vietnamese pho. Let's take a look. This selection is a bit controversial among Vietnamese people and it's easy to understand why. There are hundreds of pho restaurants in this city and everybody thinks that the one that they grew up with is the best pho place. So it is nearly impossible to suss out what is the best pho in this city. But a bunch of dudes from France did that job for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Here's what the Michelin Guide says about this place. Like most pho shops, you can order the house special to sample different beef cuts with the ubiquitous noodle soup. But the most popular ingredient here is oxtail, braised for 40 hours until the meat is tender and the skin gelatinous. Right now, it is my duty to see if they actually did a proper job of choosing one of the best fall locations in this country. Let's go inside and take a look. We've just sat down at the restaurant and I've got the menu right here in my hand. First of all, there are two main types of fall restaurants, chicken or beef. This place is a beef place and man, do they have a lot of beef options. They even have this bean testicle. I'm not in a big hurry to get testicles in my pho today, but what I will do is get what they call pho dak biet. What that means is special pho. They're gonna put a load of different types of meats inside. Come take a look with me. Right here we have all these hard working ladies surrounding. The most and vital important part of the dish right here, this is the broth. A big bubbling, boiling cauldron of deliciousness. What time did that start boiling today? Oh my God, they're so precious here. I just asked a simple question and the owner is like trying to put herself together, get her hair together back there. Lady, you look perfect. Don't worry about it. Oh, Sin Chao Ji, wow. Deb, Deb Wan? Deb Wan? I'm curious, how long has this broth been boiling today? So here's how it works. They start boiling the bones and the spices, all that together from 9 a.m. And I know what you're thinking, what, 9 a.m. to 12? That's only like three hours. No, 9 a.m. the previous day. That's wild, that's a really long time. Our bowl begins with oxtail and beef balls, both tossed in the hot broth. Next, a quick planch of pho noodles with some bean sprouts. What is it that makes your pho different from anywhere else in Saigon? She's saying she has very fresh ingredients, which we're about to see, and that she uses a lot of bones to make the broth. Now for those fresh cuts of meat, beef brisket, a medium fatty beef cut, an even fattier piece of beef, beef tendon, and a surprise entry. This right here is called cartilage, and I've never tried that in a bowl of pho before. To finish the bowl, raw beef some beef balls, and finally, that oxtail. This is a meat feast, but now it's time for the most special part, the broth. She grabs the perfect scoop and then just sinks the whole thing in this beautiful broth. From here, onions and some herbs, some salt and pepper on top of that, and that right there is a big, beautiful bowl of beef pho. Let's try it out. Boom, we have our dish right here. I'm gonna start with a little bit of lime. I don't like to put a lot of stuff into it before I actually consume it. Wow, that does not taste overrated. That is a delicious combination of savory and sweet. Let's get into the rest of it. This is that raw beef that's mostly cooked because of the hot broth. 
Oh, that is delicious. Oh, this is gnarly. This is a cartilage. Let's try it out. Mm. It's fatty, so much solid. It kind of crumbles and falls apart as you chew through it. It has a little bit of a plastic consistency. It's a definitely a unique acquired taste. Oh, right here we have some of that really fatty beef. I need to share that with some noodles. Mm. The amount of fat is intense, but if you mix it with some noodles, it balances out a little bit. This is part of the cow tail. You can literally see that was the cow skin. That could have been made into a leather boot. Cheers. It's just like a delicious, rich, tender roast beef. And then the texture of that skin is a little bit chewy and leathery. This is brisket. When you mix it with the broth and the noodles, it's perfect. Mm. Well, this is a beef tendon. When you put it in that delicious broth and you boil it for hours, it becomes kind of gummy and soft. Very good. Right here, we have a quarter of a ball. Bouncy and very peppery. This bowl right here costs $4.62. You could get a cheaper bowl if you got just beef or just one ingredient. A great value for a little bit over $4. Cleanse the palate. Uh, after trying this for the first time, do I think they actually are deserving of that Michelin Guide status? I think yes. Beyond that, the folks here are very chill, very nice, and that's really nice to see. We have one more on our list that I'm not sure if I can recommend. I'm gonna have to go there first to find out. Welcome to our third and final Michelin location right behind me. This place is called Baco Loco, right? All right. This is an out restaurant. The word out means snail. This type of restaurant is famous throughout Saigon. Here, they're not just serving snails, but also clams, mussels, shrimp, pretty much every seafood you can imagine. Here's what Michelin has to say about this restaurant. With a reputation for premium seafood and a great selection of snails cooked in various ways, shellfish lovers won't be disappointed. The snails in coconut soup, curry, and steamed with fresh peppercorn are superb. This place is a little bit of a sleeper. I've never heard of it, and it doesn't match the vibe or the ambiance of the other locations we've gone to. Those places have been more loud and street food oriented while well, this place looks much more modern i'm gonna go inside take a look at the menu and order up some delicious out i've just sat down and they have the menu right here via the old ipads now will you know what the words mean no that's what the pictures are for. I've been told they have a few different signature items, including this right here. This is alphum. Here you can have it prepared in five different ways. I think I'm gonna go with the salted egg. This is another signature snail. I'm gonna get that. And this right here, alphu. They're big and they can make it with bacon. We're gonna go upstairs now and find out. Let's see how they prepare this food. I feel a little bad for the servers who work here. Oh my God, they're going up another flight of stairs. Can you imagine going up and down these stairs 200 times a night? Someone's like, oh, can I get some extra ranch? Yeah, one second. Let me just climb. Three flights of stairs. Oh, here we are. Hello, Sin Chao. We are in the kitchen now and they're preparing something that we're not gonna be trying, but it is worth mentioning because it's very interesting. These right here, I thought they were some kind of a shell noodle at first. These are in fact squid teeth. This is kind of the muscle that holds a squid beak. They pull it out. There's many delicious ways to cook it, but we're not here for that. Let's get to our first course. Step one, boil the snails in hot water. Those come out after about 10 seconds and then they're quickly cooled. From here, the snails have been given to this gentleman who has a sauce all Already full of salted egg yolk. Wow, that is a thick sauce. There's such a unique smell coming off this pan right now. Just like that, our salted egg snails are complete next food. Right here, they've weighed out the snails for our second snail dish. Put the snails on the cutting board and give them a little bit of a chop. Wow, take a look at that knife. Very reflective. And this butter sauce is all ready to go in the wok and that smells incredible. Hits it with a little bit of water. He puts in sugar and then he puts in a little bit of fish sauce. Right here, combination of concentrated passion fruit, chilies, and chili sauce. So many flavors in one dish. Right here, a special ingredient, pork skin, once fried already, but getting fried up once again in this wok amongst all that butter. And that is complete. I wish you could smell the way it smells in here. It smells so good. Boom. Third and final course, right here. First, bacon wrapped snail. They look scrumptious. They look sweet. They look crispy. Oh, it's just like double wrapped for safety. Let's try it out. Oh, Lord. The bacon is bacon. Delicious. There's a delicious tangy flavor on there. The snail is slightly chewy, but slightly soft. So as you're biting it, you're losing track of what is bacon and what is snail. They both become combined into this one amazing entity. My people in the Midwest, next time you go to a picnic, no deviled eggs. Bring this. Next right here, we have salted egg snails. You can see an insanely thick, tasty salted egg sauce on here. Hmm, not bad, good flavor, a little dry. I think if you mix a snail with a bit of the seafood sauce, that is gonna be the perfect way to amplify its yumminess factor. Cheers. 
I get it. Ooh, the sauce is so good. You can taste the lemongrass, lime, salt, pepper. It's so fresh. Right here, these are snails cooked in butter. It's probably one of the most unhealthy things in the world. Mm. Oh, it's kind of tender. It reminds me of a squid cooked rare. Oh, I got some of that pork fat in this one. And what they want you to do is grab some banh mi, and you can dip that in there too if you'd like. And you can even throw some meat on top too. I'm definitely gaining five pounds today. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my review. Before our final food, let's talk about the price. Everything you see on the table plus one beer is $46, a little bit more than that. So if you're eating seafood in Saigon, especially at a little bit nicer establishment like this, it's gonna cost a little bit more money. But when it comes to cost, I think it's definitely worth it for this last dish, because this is something I've never seen before. This is meat from a pen shell, and this is the shell that it came in, and this will soon become the dish it's served in as well. Step one, get the fire hot. Step two, pile that meat onto a grilling basket. Those things are thick. Now the shells go back over the fire. Then we have this mixture of quail eggs and cheese. Wow, you can see the egg cooking immediately right next to the seafood there. That looks fascinating. Finally, the egg has finished cooking and we have kind of a snail omelet going on here. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of fish sauce and try it out. Let's go for it. Mm. Eggy and slightly fishy or seafoody at the same time. A slight hint of brininess from the snail mixed with this very sweet fish sauce and very fluffy egg. That is a fascinating combination. I'm coming around. I think I like it overall. This meal is complete, but I still haven't figured out if this place is worthy of being on the Michelin Guide list. We've gone to three Michelin Guide restaurants in Saigon and had three fun food experiences. The final restaurant, I found the food to be delicious, the quality was nice, and it was fun to see new innovative takes on shellfish that I've never seen before. That being said, for an elk restaurant, I picture something outside on a low slung stool with traffic nearby and the heat, all the special things that make Vietnam unique, you don't really feel it inside the restaurant. In general today, my absolute favorite is the gum tom, those giant pork chops. My second favorite, the pho, and my last favorite, but still very nice, was the out. I enjoyed it and I would recommend any of these places when you come to Ho Chi Minh City next. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is it for this one. I will see you next time. Hey, next time you need to know where to eat in Asia, ask a bunch of French guys who just came here for a weekend or something. How'd they even pick these places? Otherwise, that is it for this one. Oh, yeah, I said that already. Bye. Peace. I mean, oh, peace. Ah. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to beffers.shop today.